Another factor which affects the climate of the country is the flow of jet streams in the zone. Jet streams are majorly fast flowing winds which flow in a very narrow zone in the upper atmosphere to be precise in the tropopause where the temperature is uh, very different and uh, because of the rotation of the earth plus this variation in temperature brings this jet streams existence of the jet streams in this strata of the atmosphere. Now these jet streams they are very fast flowing winds and they can be of the speed of more than 180 kilometers per hour. These winds because they are very fast flowing also we can uh, call them that these winds they flow in a meander shape that is in a snake like movement. Fla fast flowing winds with a snake like movement with a width of around 1 to 2 miles they affect the climate of any zone over which they flow. And when we talk about the climate of India, two set of jet streams majorly flow in the Indian subcontinent and they affect the climate of the country accordingly. In India, majorly two set of jet streams flow. One is westerlies which flow in the winter duration and one is easterlies which flow in the summer duration. The westerlies which flow in the winter duration, they affect the climate of the area of the northwestern part of the country in major. This westerly jet stream brings western disturbance in the winter duration and because of that heavy snowfall is witnessed in the Himalayan zone. In the northwestern frontier of the country, in the northwestern areas of the country, snowfall is not witnessed but um, very small amount of precipitation is witnessed in this zone which is termed as Mawat in the local language. In the northwestern zone, in particular Punjab, some portion of Rajasthan and Haryana. This western disturbance brings some amount of moisture from the western areas and then in the winter duration it shows its effect and as a result snowfall occurs in the Himalayan zone and some precipitation in the northwestern frontier of the country. So this was the effect of the western jet streams. As the season changes and uh, the movement of the sun brings up different temperature in the Indian subcontinent. Another set of jet streams substitutes these westerly jet streams. In the summer duration an easterly jet streams flows in the country and they also bring their effect on the climate of the country. These easterly jet streams majorly bring cyclonic disturbances in the eastern coast of the country and uh, we can say that they are also responsible for the sudden outbreak of monsoon into the country. So overall we find that the flow of jet streams over the Indian subcontinent affects the climate of the country. Another factor which can be taken into account while we are studying the climate of the country is southern oscillation. To define the term first southern is the southern hemisphere of the earth and oscillation is to and fro movement of the wind. We are talking about the movement of the wind between two places which are completely opposite in location of the earth. That is one is on the one side of the earth and the other part, the other place that we are considering here is uh, completely on the opposite side of that place. Now if we are talking about places who are completely opposite in direction to each other the temperature will be different the temperature will be different though the uh, pressure will also be different. We are majorly studying this southern oscillation to calculate uh, the speed of monsoon or to presume uh, the advent of monsoon into the country. Two places in major are taken into consideration to study the speed of the monsoon, the intensity of the monsoon winds that will be entering into the country. First place is Tahiti in Pacific Ocean and another is Darwin in Australia. Now as we see that Pacific Ocean and Australia are completely far away from 
each other and the pressure difference in these two areas is completely opposite. If there is high pressure area in Tahiti, there will be low pressure area in Darwin and vice versa. So, depending upon the difference in pressure in these two areas, the intensity of the monsoon wind is calculated whether it will come on a timely duration or will it be weak or strong. If the pressure difference between these two zones is more, that will mean that the wind that will flow will be of a strong speed and the monsoon will enter into the country on time. If the pressure difference is negative or very less, the wind speed will accordingly be very weak and the monsoon entry into the country will be very slow or very late. So, we study southern oscillation to calculate the advent of monsoon into the country. Another factor which can be taken into consideration while we are studying the climatic conditions of the country is the land and water areas which are surrounding the country. First is that India is a, a country where the southern part of the country is a peninsula that is it is surrounded by water on three sides. At the same time we have got a large area, a plateau zone which is on the northern part of the country. The presence of the plateau, the presence of the peninsula, the presence of desert on the western side, all these factors they merge up, they amalgamate to form the existing climatic condition of the country and then uh, the final and major role playing agent is the ITCZ that is intertropical convergent zone. Because of the inclination of the earth at 23 and a half degrees, the sun rays do not put their effect, do not give their effect on one part of the earth all time of the year. It keeps on moving from up to down. We can show this with the help of a diagram as well. In the month of June, the location of the sun is on Tropic of Cancer. The straight sun rays give their effect on the Tropic of Cancer. So, we find that because the Tropic of Cancer is located in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere at that time is not witnessing the straight sun rays, uh, between 21st or 22nd June, we find the longest day and the of the year on 21st or 22nd June. At this time, the ITCZ is located in the upper part, that is the zone which is intensely heated. In the month of December, Because of the inclination of the earth again, the tropic of Capricorn witnesses straight sun rays and in this duration the ITCZ shifts in the southern part of the world. At this time of the year, the northern hemisphere witnesses the longest night of the year, December 21st. Because the sun rays in the northern hemisphere are not straight at this time of the year. At two times of the year, when the sun rays are straight on the equator, at this time we witness equinox, that is equal days and nights, and the sun rays is directly are directly between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So this movement of sun rays between Tropic of Cancer, Equator and Tropic of Capricorn keeps on changing the temperature belt as a result of which the pressure belts also keeps on changing. This is known as intertropical convergent zone. Keeping this in mind, the wind movement also gets affected 
with the movement of the sun and changing of the heat belt from north to south and vice versa to study this the coriolis effect is studied in the coriolis effect we find that the winds tend to deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere and to their left in the southern hemisphere because of the deflection of the wind and the location of the sun and changing of the heat belt the changing of the pressure belt all these factors affect the movement of the wind around the earth and because of the movement of the wind seasons change around the earth like i said that the deflection of the wind is towards its right in the northern hemisphere and towards its left in the southern hemisphere now here is one thing that we are assuming that the location of the sun is on the equator if the location of the sun is on the equator this is the zone which is getting the highest amount of heat so this will be a low pressure area high temperature leads to low pressure and then we write it alternately high pressure low pressure and high pressure the same goes in the southern hemisphere as well i will explain to you why we are having a high pressure between two low pressure areas it is uh this zero degree line the low pressure belt is easy enough to understand because the sun rays are directly on this zone there is intense heat as a result there is a low pressure area and the poles are also easy to understand because uh these are areas where sun rays do not reach in a straight manner they are mostly inclined and inclined so much that they do not carry heat the temperature here is very low as a result the pressure here is intensely high but what brings these two areas here what is the reason why there is a high pressure belt in the close by areas of the low pressure zone and then a low pressure belt which is closer to poles there are reasons for this here because we are considering at the zero degree there is a low pressure belt as a result of the low pressure the intense temperature here leads to heating up of the surface air surface wind which rises up from its areas as the wind rises up from its areas it starts getting cold with the altitude with the altitude as the wind is moving up and getting colder then it starts getting heavier as the wind gets heavier they then again start falling back and they majorly fall back in the tropics because in this zone completely the temperature is most of the time high so even if they fall in the same zone they'll be forced to heat up and rise up again so they tend to fall on the tropics tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn adding on to the air mass which is already present there leading to a high pressure area in this zone now what is the reason of a low pressure area on the 66 and a half degree lines that is the arctic circle and the antarctic circle 
the scientists have studied that because the poles they have very high pressure they uh, and there is no land mass in particular this presence of high pressure extremely low temperature these conditions they in this zones they tend to attract wind from the close by areas as a result of this when they are attracting wind from the close by areas so the areas which we are talking here about is 66 and a half degrees arctic and antarctic circle and from these zones these poles attract wind leading to a decrease in the air pressure in this zone which leads to a low pressure area which is what we are witnessing here keeping in the mind the coriolis effect the movement of the wind from high pressure to low pressure area now we can start drawing the arrows or the movement of the wind the direction of the wind from high pressure to low pressure areas this is majorly the movement of the wind around the world if the winds are flowing in the northern hemisphere they tend to deflect to their right then the right direction will be from the high pressure to low pressure movement now one more thing that has to be explained here is how are we taking the left and right direction the left and right direction here is taken by locating yourself on the equator and facing the poles if we are facing the northern pole that is in the northern hemisphere the uh, the direction which is on your right hand is right if you are standing on the equator facing the southern pole the direction will be left so accordingly we are taking the northern the right and left direction all these factors being now we can start with the onset of the monsoon in india